All right, it's finally time for an empties video. One, two, and three. I have so much stuff to talk about. Let me show you my belly again though. I am 35 weeks. I don't know if this is going to be a pre-filmed video or not. I may have already had the baby when I upload this. Look at her in there, all cozy. So cute. All right, where to start? I've got a little bit of makeup and then a lot of like skincare, hair care, stuff like that. I've got the NYX Brow Glue. I have been so obsessed with this. Soap brows are very on trend, but I feel like they can be a little bit tricky to do. For me, like I can slick them down, but then it leaves a bit of a residue. And even when I try and wipe it off, I don't know, it just, meh. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes products pill up. I don't know. So that is why I love this so much. It's got a nice tiny little spoolie on it. Look at that. And what I like about this is that the formula is quite sticky. And initially that sounds bad, but it grips onto every single hair and just slicks them down. They don't go crispy or crunchy at all. They just slick down and stay in place all day. So I've used it like a few different ways, like applying it first, letting it dry down, then going in with my pencil or going in with my pencil first and then applying this to just keep the brows in line, you know, keep them in shape and it works great no matter what. I love it. I'm onto my second tube already. I've got a few brow pencils here, starting with the Inoxa 2-in-1 Brow Shape and Define. This one was a really nice product. I loved the shade. I just prefer a micro tip over this shape, like that diamondy triangle shape. It does work well, but I just like a micro tip better. So I probably won't repurchase this, but it was a nice product, nice and creamy, stayed in place. It's got a spoolie on the end, not bad. And then the three micro tip pencils I have are the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim, the BYS Brow Liner, and the NYX micro brow pencil. Now all of these work quite similarly. I can never, is that a word? Similar, similarly. They're all quite similar, okay? But out of the three of them, if I was going to repurchase one, it would be the NYX because I love the shade. So I use taupe and it has a nice cool undertone, which is what I prefer for my brows. I feel like it's a little, I don't want to say dry, like in a bad way, but it's a little drier than the other two. Still creamy, but I find because it is a little bit drier, it doesn't like slip and slide around. So like if you were to put a brow gel in after you've drawn your brows on, it doesn't move the product. So Definitely love the NYX, but these two were good as well. Next, I've got a few products that I think are discontinued or they've changed, I don't know. Starting with the L'Oreal Shake and Glow. This one has definitely been discontinued, which is so freaking sad because this spray, beautiful. It would just leave the most gorgeous, dewy glow. Oh. I don't want to rave about it too much because you can't get it, but if you know, you know. The Rimmel Insta Fix and Go. This has been one of my favorites for quite a few years. I believe they still have it. I think they've just changed the packaging, so it's not this pink and brown anymore. It might be like red, but this is a great spray for keeping your makeup in place, and it has a nice fresh cucumber scent. And then we've got the L'Oreal Infallible Anti-Redness Primer. Now, I don't know what the hell is going on with this because I was sure that it's been discontinued. I haven't seen it in Priceline for so long, but it comes up on the chemist website, chem <laughs> chemist warehouse website. So like, what is going on? I don't know. But if you can get your hands on it and you've got redness to your skin, this neutralizes it like no other. If you've got dry skin, I don't think this is the formula for you because it can cling to dry patches. It's just the best anti-redness primer I've tried. I've been raving about it for years, so I really hope it's not gone, but I can't confirm. Another anti-redness primer that I really enjoyed is the Stila One Step Correct. Now this is more of a high-end product. It's got like the three different colors in it. It's very nice. It neutralizes redness well, 
not as good as the L'Oreal, but it still does a good job and it's a lot more moisturizing and like hydrating. So if you do have dry skin, this would be a good one for you. I think the other shades that were in it were like a peach and a purple, so really good for just brightening the skin overall. It is a really nice primer. I don't think there's a drugstore dupe that I'm familiar with. So this is something that I would consider repurchasing. Next, I've got three of the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Pressed Powders. Oh, I just, oh, I love this. I love this so much. I haven't been using as much powder lately, but when I do, I always go for this one. First of all, the shade is great for fair skin. Let me show you one that I've got open. God, well, it's open, but it's also nearly empty. So I use the shade 120 Fair, and what I love about this is the formula. It does give a little bit of coverage, but it just leaves your skin looking so smooth, like unbelievably smooth. It is a beautiful powder for under the eyes. I do prefer to apply it with a sponge. So rubbing it in the powder and then pressing it into the skin, it just sets everything in place for so long. It doesn't feel heavy or cakey. I've never had it mix, like mix funky with foundations. It is just so beautiful and one that I will continue to repurchase. Priceline does stock this powder, but I don't think they have the shade 120. So I usually buy it from Chemist Warehouse. Next, I have the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer. This is an oldie, but let me tell you, it is, is the saying a goldie or a goodie? I don't know, but this is a good concealer. It's very like rich and creamy, but not heavy under the eyes. I would say it has quite a high coverage, which I really like, especially for under the eyes, because I feel like it just kind of makes the whole base look flawless. I've definitely seen a difference in how concealers perform under my eyes over the last couple of years, and this is one that I think works really great for fine lines. Because it is more of a rich formula, I found that it doesn't settle into fine lines really deeply. It's long lasting, it blends easily, I love it. Next, I've got the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. Now, this is in the shade 05 Fair, which actually isn't available here in Australia. The lighter shade you can get is 10. Like, so annoying. But anyway, this powder does add a bit of coverage and it's just one of those ones that leave everything looking so smooth. It is beautiful. It doesn't look dry on the skin when you apply it with a sponge. You can get a really beautiful coverage or if you just want a lighter dusting of powder, go ahead with a brush and it's going to give you just that. It is so beautiful. I will have a look online and see where you can get 05 if you're super fair and I will link it in the description box. And then lastly for makeup, I've got a MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation. This is in the shade NW10, but I do prefer NC10. This is a really great full coverage, like a glam foundation. Again, it's one of those older ones. I don't feel like many people dip into this anymore, but it's an absolute classic. I've got another one in my collection and I love using it for when I want, like I said, a really glam look because it has amazing full coverage and it's super long lasting. All right, let's talk removing makeup, starting with the Q&A Grapefruit Cleansing Balm. Now this was nice, but I probably wouldn't repurchase it. It did a good job of removing my makeup. It is like a thicker balm, but I did find it left quite a bit of residue. When I remove my makeup, I always go in with a cleansing balm or an oil, and then I use like a makeup removing cloth. So it was nice, but I wouldn't repurchase it. One that I absolutely love is the Sukin Super Greens Cleansing Oil. It's just nice and silky. It really melts into the skin and there was no residue afterwards. So this is one I definitely recommend. I've got a few masks here, starting with the Garnier Hydro Bomb Eye Sheet Masks. These are my favorite eye masks. You don't even need to put them in the fridge and they already feel so cooling. They are super refreshing under the eyes. I love them. I have so many backups in my collection. Another one I really enjoyed was the Simple Reviving Under Eye Mask. Not as cooling as the Garnier, but still super hydrating and they're just a nice treat. Yeah, I just think they're a nice treat, especially if you've had a rough night, you know, maybe a few tears, your eyes are a bit puffy the next day. I've definitely had a lot of hormonal tears the last couple months, so I love me a good eye mask. A sheet mask I really loved is this Skin Republic Ceramide Mask. I believe this is one of their newer ones. 
Again, it just has that cooling feeling. I love that cooling feeling when it comes to a face mask. It just feels so fresh and it was really hydrating. So this is one I would definitely repurchase. And then a sheet mask that was a bit like it was good, but it was different was this Dr. Lewin's vitamin and mineral sheet mask. It wasn't like your typical sheet mask material. It was kind of like a gel. Although it was nice and hydrating, I felt like because of the texture of it, I didn't get as much of the actual product and serum like absorbing into my skin. So although it was nice, I don't know if I would repurchase this one. All right, deodorants. I have been a lover of the Schmitz brand natural deodorant for years. It has just been my go-to. So I do have a few here, but I started to notice it was making my armpits get like a little rashy, which was so weird because as I said, I've been using it for years and that has never happened. And also I have a problem where like, one armpit just gets stinky and the other one just lives its best life stink free. So I don't know what the deal is. The Schmitz deodorant was like the only one that really worked for me. So I tried the Aiken natural deodorant, hated it. I was still stinky. So this is like pretty much full. I tried the Kindly natural deodorant. This one was nice, but didn't really do enough, especially through those really hot summer days. The deodorant that I have found and loved is by the brand A Bit Hippie, and this is their anti-irritation deodorant. So this is just like your regular roll-on. It keeps the stench away. It keeps me feeling fresh all day. I absolutely love it. I am on to my second one now. I've been using quite a bit from this brand lately and I am really enjoying it. So definitely worth taking a look at. They've got quite a big range. Next on the agenda is vitamin C's. And do I have a few here to go over? Let me start out with the ones that I did not like. First up is the Bondi Sands Golden Hour. Now, cute packaging, love the aesthetic of the brand, but this vitamin C made me break out with blackheads. I actually find that a lot with vitamin C's. I don't know. So this one has a serum consistency. It didn't feel too heavy on the skin at all, but it just clogged my pores. I didn't really see any like brightness, like my skin didn't look any brighter. I just had more blackheads. So I haven't finished it. I was just like, I'm not using that. Another one that gave me blackheads was this number seven radiance vitamin C. This is a 15% vitamin C serum. Again, nice texture, but I just don't know why some of them break me out with blackheads. It's so annoying. Next is the Q&A vitamin C. And this one was more of like a creamy serum consistency. And although it didn't break me out with blackheads, I just wasn't the biggest fan of the consistency. It felt a little bit heavy on my skin. It took a while to absorb. And I really didn't see that much difference with the brightness in my skin. One that I absolutely loved is by Trilogy. And this is the Vitamin C Booster. Now the formula of this is like a really thin serum. So I think that is the vitamin C formula that works best for my skin. It did not break me out in any way, no blackheads, no congestion, and it really brightened up my skin. Because I am very breakout prone, I do get a lot of like hyperpigmentation that hangs around after I have a pimple, which is so annoying. And I find that vitamin C just does a really good job at helping fade those spots way quicker than they would fade on their own. It also just adds a glow to your skin. It's so beautiful. I love using vitamin C in my daily routine and I really enjoyed this one by Trilogy. I would definitely repurchase it. My favorite vitamin C that I have been using lately though is the Skin Physics Oxygen C. Now I have repurchased this one multiple times. Although I love the Trilogy, this one is double the size. It doesn't have a very high concentration of vitamin C. It's only 2.5% and it also contains niacinamide. But again, it's that really nice thin consistency. It doesn't break me out. And as I said, even though it's got a low dose of vitamin C, I find it just really works for my skin at brightening it, fading those pigmentation spots. It is just beautiful and it's quite affordable as well and always goes on sale at Priceline. So... This is hands down my favorite out of all those vitamin C's that I've tried. A skincare product that I cannot live without is the Paula's Choice 
2% BHA liquid. Now this is a salicylic acid, so it says that it unclogs and shrinks enlarged pores, it smooths and evens skin tone, and it is very lightweight and absorbs quickly. I agree with all of those claims. I've been using it for years and it is the only product that actually reduces my blackheads. I find when I start to go overboard, my skin really doesn't like it. So I do have to tone it down to like two, maybe three times a week, but it just does such a good job at smoothing out your skin. If you have texture, this product completely gets rid of it. I've recommended it to two of my sisters who went through a bit of a bad skin stage with that rough texture, blackheads, and it did wonders for their skin. It completely smoothed it out. Highly recommend it. I've been repurchasing it for years. I swear it's been in like every empties video I ever do. Then a bit of random skincare here. I've got the Hey Bud Liquid High Hyaluronic Acid. Now this has been amazing. Most hyaluronic acids that I've tried have been in like a dropper form, but this is like a really thin, serum and it is just beautiful and I actually see great results with the hydration that is kept in my skin. So it does contain a few other ingredients. It's not just straight up hyaluronic acid, but as I said, it just works so well for my skin type, which by the way, I do have like combination skin. I get a little oily throughout the T-zone. I can get dry on my breakouts. As you saw, I'm pregnant at the moment, so I am getting a lot of hormonal acne on my jaw. It's just all over the place, but this is a really nice hydrating serum. I'm onto my second bottle already. I love it. Next, I've got the Antipodes Credo Probiotic Ferment. And when I first got this, I was like, what on earth is this serum? But oh my God, this just completely like brightened my skin. It cleared up the breakouts I was having. I don't know what kind of magic is in this, but it did wonders for my skin. So I instantly went out and purchased the bigger bottle. This also contains, I don't know if I'm saying this right, like Bacchuli, Bacchuil, Bacchuil. I don't know, but it's like a vitamin A alternative. And because I'm pregnant, I haven't been using retinol. So this has been fantastic for my skin, especially during pregnancy. Next is the Keep It Simple Skin Shut Eye Eye Cream. And this was a really nice lightweight under eye cream. I find if I use eye creams that are too heavy, I get those little, um, what are they called? M milia? Is that what it's called? I've actually got one at the moment. It's like those little... It just looks like a pimple, but you can't squeeze it. It's very annoying, especially because I'm a pimple popper. But this is a really nice lightweight formula. I love the packaging too. It's like twist the top and squeeze a little bit out. Wow, camera really doesn't want to focus today. Anyway, really nice packaging. A little goes a long way. It's very hydrating. I really loved it for in the mornings before I put on my makeup. So it's definitely one that I would repurchase. I know it looks quite tiny, but it lasts a really long time. Another under eye product is the L'Oreal Revitalift Hyaluronic and Caffeine Serum. Now there is still a little bit left because it went a bit of a manky color. I don't know what that's about. But this product, it was nice, but I don't know if I would repurchase it. The thing I loved the most was the applicator. So you've got these three little stainless steel balls that feel so cooling under the eyes. Oh my God, they are so nice. It's so refreshing in the morning. Now, I feel like this did its job at being hydrating and like making you feel fresh under the eyes, but I don't know if I would go ahead and spend the money on it again. Next, I've got this Youth to the People Superfood Reset Mask. This is a really nice clay mask if you don't like your clay masks to be extremely like drying. I don't even know if drying is the right word, but you know when you use a clay mask, how like it really dries down and draws out all those impurities? This dries down, but not to the point where like you literally can't move your face. <laughs> I feel like it still gave me a really deep clean though. And afterwards my face felt fresh and still hydrated. Like all the moisture wasn't completely drawn out of my skin. Next, I've got a few moisturizers, starting with a sample I've just finished up. This is the, is it Biosense? Biosense, I don't know. Anyway, a squalene and probiotic gel moisturizer. I loved this, oh my God. What month are we in now? March, so like we've just finished summer, going into autumn. I still want a moisturizer that's quite lightweight, but you know, gives me a good boost of hydration. And this 
was it. It was so beautiful. It's a little richer than my much loved Neutrogena water gel, which we'll talk about soon. And so that's what I think makes it a really great moisturizer as we're going from summer into winter. I definitely want to look at the bigger size, see how much it is, because I would contemplate purchasing the bigger size. I really enjoyed this. A moisturizer I did not like was this water infusing electrolyte moisturizer by Paula's Choice. I just got a free sample in one of my orders. Ooh, it stunk like foul. I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't use it. It just, the smell was so off-putting. I couldn't even think about what it felt like on my skin. I was just like, ugh. And that was like pre-pregnancy as well. So it's not just my pregnancy sniffer. A moisturizer that I really enjoyed, but I think is best as it goes into the cooler months as it's quite rich is this Bondi Sands Daydream Whipped Moisturizer. This has a really beautiful creamy texture. As I said, it's quite rich. It's really hydrating. It smells good. It feels good. I have already repurchased it ready for the winter time. Now, as we all know, I love this Neutrogena Water Gel Moisturizer. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven of them here that I've used up. <laughs> I love it so much. It is just extremely lightweight. That gel formula feels really fresh, a little bit cooling, and it's so hydrating. I don't know how it keeps my skin so hydrated when it's such a lightweight formula. They do have a few different types in the range. There's a night concentrate, a gel cream, and a water gel. My favorite is the water gel. It never breaks me out. It never feels heavy on my skin. Like, it doesn't feel like it's clogging my pores. I just... I can't get enough of it, clearly. I do have another one ready to open. I'm actually excited to get into that because they did repackage these to be refillable. So you just take out like the jar and repurchase the little jars. So that'll be good. But I like that they have upped their game and made more eco-friendly packaging. Now a moisturizer I thought that would be quite similar is the number seven hydroluminous water surge gel. Now this one was nice. But there was just something about it, it didn't quite compare to my Neutrogena. It was lightweight, it was hydrating, like it ticked all those boxes, but oh my god, the fragrance. Ooh, it's just so floral and I, ugh, I just can't do it. So won't be repurchasing that one. Next, I've got two oils that I have used on my bump. So starting with the Pure Mama Belly Oil. This is a nice big bottle. It was expensive too, I think, around like $70, $70 or something. Um, look, I know you can't prevent stretch marks with a body oil, like they're genetic. If they happen, they happen. But I really enjoyed this because it was soothing. It made me feel like a connection to my baby, rubbing the oil on every night. It helped with any itchiness of my skin as it expanded. If you are pregnant and want that nice experience, I would definitely recommend this. Does it help with stretch marks? I don't know. I don't have any on my belly yet. I do have a few on my thighs, or not my thighs, like my my hips. So yeah, stretch marks are genetic. What are you going to do about it? It was nice though. It was nice. Another oil I tried is the Eco by... See, this brand confuses me because I'm sure it's called Eco Tan, but on the bottle it says Eco by Sonia Driver. So I don't know, but this is the Glory Oil and this has really good reviews on Sephora. It is expensive. It's like $110 for this 100 ml. It is an Omega Abundant Oil with pumpkin seed Inca Inchi and Acai Fruit. I picked up this one for the bump because I saw Georgie Stevenson saying she really loved it. I found it didn't go as far as the Pure Mama Oil. Like I used this up really quickly and I do think it is more targeted for like your face and your chest and the reviews of people who've used it on their face and their chest say they absolutely love it. It was a nice oil. Is it the best oil for your bump? I don't know. I just felt like the Pure Mama one was a bit more rich. You didn't have to use as much and it, it just went further. And then after I went in with my oils, I also went in with a moisturizer and would put this all over my bump. And one that I have gone ahead and used up is the A Bit Hippie Anti-Irritation Moisturizer. This is quite a big bottle too. It's 200 grams 
and I love this because it was rich. It's got a ton of omega-6 fatty acids, vitamin C, aloe vera, and it just really hydrated my skin. I'm not that big on body moisturizers, like only really when it gets into winter and I'm having scalding hot showers and taking all the moisture out of my skin. But this one was really nice. It left my skin feeling super smooth and it absorbed quickly as well. I thought because it was so rich, it might take a little longer, but wasn't a problem at all. It was absolutely beautiful and I would repurchase. A cleanser I used up is by Neostrata and this is the Clarify Cleanser. I loved this. Instantly when I used it, it cleared up my breakouts. This is specifically designed for acne prone skin. It does contain AHAs and as I said, it just worked immediately. It's a really big bottle too. You've got 200 mils. So this lasted me so long. I could use it morning and night. It's a really lightweight gel cleanser. I find that some acne prone, like targeted skincare can be quite drying on the skin, but this wasn't the case at all. It didn't leave my skin feeling tight and icky after using it. It was really nice. It felt hydrated, cleansed. I loved it, would definitely repurchase. Next, I've got the Ultraviolet Queen Screen SPF. This is just a little sample. It is a 50 plus. The formula was nice, like it's lightweight, feels good, but that's where it stops, all right? This little dropper, I don't know if this is how the bigger bottle comes as well, but it is the most inconvenient way to try and apply sunscreen. Shit, hated it. And then, oh. That scent, <laughs> I cannot use it. It's so floral. I literally only use this a few times and I was like, nah, I'm done. I, it's gotta go, I can't use it. The SPF that I have been in love with and used for so long is the Cancer Council Face Day Wear Moisturizer. This is a 50 plus and I have one, two, three, four, five of them here. Like, is that not saying I love them? And this is also the big boy bottle as well. This is the 150 mil. It is lightweight. Like it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It doesn't clog my pores. It absorbs quite quickly as well. So I can go straight ahead and put on my makeup. It doesn't feel greasy or slimy. It literally just feels like a moisturizer. I'll apply it all over my face, all over my neck and chest and on my hands. It's just so good. And this is the only sunscreen that my husband will use on his face as well. He is the most picky sunscreen user I've ever met. He hates it when it's thick, when it feels greasy, if it runs into his eyes. Like he has got so many hates when it comes to a facial SPF and it really puts him off using one. And I'm there in his ear going, put your sunscreen on, put your sunscreen on. And this is the only one he loves. Next, I've got a few shower items, starting with some body washes from the Base Collective. I did prefer this magnesium and lavender sleep body wash though, because it does contain the lavender, it's even more soothing and it really does get you in like that nice sleepy mode, ready for bed. <laughs> I really love this brand. I recommend their products. They've got good ingredients and I find that magnesium like applied topically works really well for me. I'm actually using it a lot during my pregnancy to help with cramps in my calves at night and just with like aches and pains in my back and my hips. So anything with magnesium, I am all here for. Next, I've got this shower steamer by Anihana. Anihana, I believe it is. Again, this is a New Zealand based brand. I actually met them at one of the Priceline Beauty prescription events. And so they've got a ton of shower steamers. Now this isn't really like a necessity, but it is a nice little luxury. The peppermint one, especially like if you're feeling a bit congested, you just sit it in the corner of your shower and the hot steam just creates this beautiful scent Oh my gosh, it's so nice. I also really like the lavender one. That is super calming. Next is the Dermavine shower and bath oil. Oh my God, I love this. First of all, nice big, big boy, one liter. If you have dry skin, itchy skin, irritated skin, this is the product for you. It is an oil, so 
I don't like to use it really as like a body wash, but it's so good for winter time when your skin is a little bit drier. It just works so well because it is quite thick. It's just, I don't know, it, it sounds bad, an oil thick in the shower, Ugh. but it just hydrates the skin like nothing else. I absolutely love it. I repurchase it all the time. I do wait till it's on sale though, because it is a little bit pricey, but I feel like it just really soothes the skin and locks in that moisture. <sighs> all right, there's like a few products left. We are nearly done. Shampoo and conditioner. I've got the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Yogurt range. I love this range. So, so the shampoo and conditioner worked really well for my hair. I do have quite a wavy hair. If I looked after it, it would have a really nice curl pattern, but I use heat on it a lot. That's why I slick it back all the time because it's not the kind of hair that you can just brush and it looks nice. If I'm gonna wear it out, it's gotta be styled. Like you can even see these little frizzy curly bits coming out at the back here. Like get back in place, ma'am. If you've got quite fine hair, I think this range might be a bit too heavy for you, but it's perfect for me. After the shampoo and conditioner, I also go in with the hydrate and repair power protein treatment. It's pretty much just a hair mask, but this just adds so much moisture back into my hair. I love using that. And then I've also got the leave-in conditioner, which I do like to use on like other nights, not really on hair wash night because my hair is looking and feeling really hydrated afterwards. But during washes, that's when I go in with the leave-in conditioner. And again, it just adds so much moisture back into my hair, especially like after I've heat styled it, like I'll wet my hair in the shower that night and then spray this, beautiful. Next, I've got the L'Oreal Elnet Satin Heat Protectant. I've repurchased this one, I really like it. It's got a nice spritz on it, it smells good. How do you know if a product really prevents heat damage? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> it's a big bottle, it's easy to use and it makes my hair feel nice after I've styled it with heat, like it doesn't feel dry and frizzy at all, so. Then I've got one of the Batiste dry shampoos. This is the original. I don't think I really tried any of these scented ones, but I love this dry shampoo. It just does the job. Dries up those oils, doesn't leave any white marks in my hair. You know, once you rub it in, it blends in well. It just, it's perfect. Have repurchased this brand for a long time, I love it. And then lastly, people, we have the Schwarzkopf Matte Paste. And I love this stuff, especially if you've got a lot of flyaways. If you've got hair like mine and you wanna do a little slick back moment, this is perfect. It's not a gel, so it doesn't leave your hair feeling crunchy. It's like a kind of thick paste, but when you warm it up in your hands and then just mm -mm -mm in your hair, it really just holds everything down. It keeps those flyaways at bay doesn't leave your hair feeling heavy or greasy. Like I don't need to wash it that night after I've used this. They have changed the packaging, so it does look a little bit different, but it's still bright yellow, so you'll be able to see it, but I definitely recommend this, love it. All right, well, that is everything. If you made it to the end of this video, oh my God, amazing work. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a little garbage bin emoji. If you've tried any of these products, I would love to hear your thoughts and reviews on them in the comments down below. If you aren't already, come and follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. If you're new here, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. That's all I've got for now. I won't hold you up any longer. I do hope to see you in the next one and hope you all have a fabulous day. Bye.